Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. If you would take a moment and please register your attendance and include everybody that's watching so that way we can track your attendance. If you're home and you're not feeling well today, we're sorry about that, but glad you're keeping those germs away for sure. And if you're just joining us online like you normally do or for the first time, great to have you. Let us know you're watching too. And let us know if there's any way we can serve you. This morning, we're going to look at Romans chapter 10 in our for our sermon focus, as we've been in Romans for a little bit, but St. Paul's got some interesting challenges for us, even in Romans chapter 10. Let's get going with our opening song. When all I see is the battle you see my victory When all I see is the mountain You see a mountain moved. And as I walk through the shadows Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now for I safe with you so when I fight I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high oh God the battle belongs to you and every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night oh God the battle belongs to you for me who can be against me for Jesus there's nothing impossible for you when all I see are the ashes you'll see the beauty oh when all I see is a cross God you see You go before us Nothing can stand against the power of our God You shine in the shadows You win every battle Nothing can stand against the power of our God Almighty fortress You go before us Nothing can stand against the power of our God You shine in the shadows You win every battle Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted. We continue with Martin Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. 
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly sections of Psalm 18. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompass me, the torrents of destruction assailed me, the cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, to my God I cried for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sins to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have turned away from each other in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We repent and are truly sorry for these our sins. Have mercy on us, kind Father, because of the obedience of our brother, Jesus Christ, your Son. Forgive us all that is past, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, move us to serve you faithfully. Set our feet upon a new path of life, and build your kingdom here among us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us and sent his Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Old Testament reading for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost is from Job chapter 38. The Lord said to Job, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? when I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal, and its features stand out like a garment, from the wicked their light is withheld, and the, their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you? Have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare, if you know all of this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 10. Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near to you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And when Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water, he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to our children's message. And what am I holding? Doesn't it kind of look like a little bit of a vine? Yeah, 
So by our church, if you know where our church is at, when you're walking towards the church into the sanctuary, there's a little area we call our, like our prayer garden. And some of the weeds have been kind of overgrowing. So we have to thank Miss Jane and Donovan for doing a great job of cleaning up that area. And this is one of the things they cut off. You see, they had cut it off from its root. Now, what's going to happen to this, do you think, since it no longer has a root? It's probably going to die, isn't it, right? Yeah, because the vine being connected to the root is what keeps this little, this little vine thing alive. So if we kept rolling here long enough, we would probably see the leaves start to wither up and die and, and go away. And eventually it'll just crumble into nothing because, well, because it's not attached to the root. It's not attached to the ground. It has no way to get nutrients any more. That kind of reminds me about Jesus. And how does that remind me about Jesus? Well, it reminds me about Jesus because you and I need to make sure that we are always connected to Jesus. What does that mean? Well, that means we can pray to Jesus. We can come to Sunday school or church and hear more words about Jesus' love for us. We can read the Bible at home in our family devotions, and we can talk about Jesus. See, that's how we stay connected to Jesus, because we think about him. If we see a cross, we can remember that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. If we see maybe a picture of somebody praying, we can remember that no matter what's going on in our life, we can always pray to Jesus, and that keeps us connected to him. We want to live a life that always remembers Jesus every single day. When we wake up in the morning, let's remember that Jesus loves us. When we go to bed at night, we can pray and thank Jesus for being with us all day. We can always stay connected to Jesus because he loves and cares for us and he feeds us with his love. So let's pray and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. Help me every day to love Jesus the most and to always stay connected to his love for me. Amen.
to you, online viewers, chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by His Spirit for obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. So up, up and away with Jesus? What was Pastor Joe up to with that particular title? Well, I wasn't thinking about the rapture or something along the lines of that, because that, of course, is a, a false teaching, not a teaching that we subscribe to, uh, or even a balloon ride with Jesus. That's not exactly what I was talking about either. But I was picking up on the epistle lesson when St. Paul was talking about the idea, is it possible for us to go up and grab a hold of Jesus and bring him back down here? Or in the other aspect of what Christ accomplished for you and for me on with his death on the cross and descended into hell, like we could go down and bring Jesus back up into this world or whatever it might mean along the lines of that. Because simply, I think what <laughs> St. Paul is reminding us is that we don't move Jesus. He's the one that moves us. So obviously, St. Paul is using some rhetorical language to challenge us, to get us thinking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the part that the lectionary left off is what I need to go back to for helping us understand exactly what St. Paul is talking about. Our righteousness comes from Jesus and from Jesus alone. It's not found in ourself. The world gets this confused all the time by seeking all kinds of different ways for rightness or righteousness to exist within ourselves. But St. Paul writes clearly in the, earlier in this chapter about where our righteousness comes from. For being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Did you get that? <laughs> when we seek after righteousness in this world or righteousness in a, a cause or an identity outside of Christ, we fall flat on our face because we have to be solid in our understanding about where our righteousness comes. Because if we miss that, we will mislead others and they will not be able to see Jesus in us. It is those that confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and they can witness to the hope that they have in Jesus that can point people in the right way. James Emery White wrote the following in a blog entitled Evaluating the Fruit Test. I posted this on Facebook on Thursday on our church's website if you want to go back and read the entire article. But he begins this way. In light of the many revelations of respected Christians who were, in truth, leading deeply entrenched shadow lives, the fruit test has loomed large. And what is that test? In speaking of false prophets, Jesus said that we will be able to recognize them by their fruit. Good trees, he maintained, produce good fruit. And bad trees produce bad fruit. A bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Matthew 7, verses 15 to 20. From this has come a popular litmus test. If an individual's ministry effort is bearing good fruit, they must be good. The fruit of their ministry clearly validates them as individuals. Oh, really? <laughs> James is definitely being sarcastic here, and I would certainly have to agree with that. If somebody measured me individually by the fruit that was produced in the church that I serve, well, I would want to stop them right there. Because my value is not in the fruit production. My value is in Christ alone. Remember, Christ is the one that bears fruit for his kingdom. He uses me, absolutely, that is true. But my value, my identity is still in Christ alone. 
I am a poor, miserable sinner, just like you are a poor, miserable sinner. But that does not define you, nor does it define anyone that is in Christ Jesus. It's Christ alone. That's your identity. This logic, unfortunately, though, has permeated the American church culture for sure. In other words, if we just have the right pastor, or if we just have the right leader, or, or building, or program, then we will be the best church ever by some measurement that we concoct for rightness. I don't think that that is what Jesus had in mind for his church at all. And that's what St. Paul is getting at when he says things like, can we bring Christ up from the dead or bring him down from heaven as if we're the one that moves Christ at all? Absolutely not. And we have to remember that he is the Lord of his church and it is Christ working in and through his people not the other way around, that accomplishes the purposes for which Christ would have it go. This is his formula for success. That is, following what Christ would have us do in our lives, living God's will for our lives. That's what the pillar of living is all about. Christ followers understand the freedom of living according to God's perfect plan while the world promotes serving self, Christ followers live to selflessly serve those that the Lord has placed in our lives, including family, co-workers, peers, friends, and our church family. These are the daily activities of being a Christ follower as we have established with our pillars, serving others, you see, many Christians lose sight of this. It's like, Jesus died for me, I'm good, no worries at all. Well, it is true that Jesus did die for us, and thankfully that is so because our sins are no longer held against us, but Jesus does want us to follow in his footsteps, not to be more saved, but to save others. That's the important. That's the point of this pillar, that when we live our life for Christ, we shine Christ's life in the world. This past uh, couple Saturdays ago, I was attending a wedding, and we had this come up in a wedding conversation with two ladies that I was visiting with. They were not impressed with Christians at all. That name they had associated with something that was negative. Negative, and that's what their opinion was of Christians. Now, if we were truly following Christ, or if they had been exposed to those that were truly following Christ, I would guess that perhaps they would have maybe a little different understanding of a Christian. And they did make mention of that as they were at an Episcopalian uh, school that was teaching them about counseling. They said that they did know a couple of people that kind of lived a radical life for Christ. But see, if we are truly following Christ, then we should portray not a negative opinion of Christ, but rather a positive one. Because after all, that is intended by our Lord, that when we live our lives, that people see his love in us. I apologize that they didn't have a very good impression with Christianity and said that, yes, that certainly might be the case. American Christianity certainly is not maybe the best reflection of Christ living in this world. I said, well, maybe you haven't really met a true Christ follower. <laughs> and of course, we can't control what they think or believe about us. And in the end, the conversation that I had with them, I think I got them thinking slightly different. Claire actually said that she thought I was a cool pastor. Well, <laughs> I have a cool Savior. And that's what drives that. As St. Paul reminds us, for the Scripture says Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. That's you and me. 
as Christ's followers. Sir, the world may hate us because of our stance and our beliefs, but that's not our problem. We reflect Christ and the Holy Spirit works in and through you and me. You see, we don't point other people to other people or like a standout Christian that we know of in that regard. We point to Jesus because he's the author and perfecter of our faith. Remember, Jesus is the one that can melt hearts and change other hearts to follow him too. In fact, that's the work of the Holy Spirit, and we know that that's the way that it goes. As St. Paul reminds us, even in the Old Testament, that this is how it works. Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But of Israel, he says, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. You see, we never know how that spirit is going to work, but we do know that it is working. So no matter what we do in our lives, let's live our lives for Jesus, following his teachings, teachings, even though they might be unpopular in the world, and maybe they won't help us to get ahead. But that's not the goal, right? We are not living for this world. We are living for Christ alone. And we need to be ready to give witness to the hope that we have in Jesus, not in this world. James Emery White concludes, Finally, faithfulness does matter. Do not fall prey to thinking that since God seems to use people given over to sin, you might as well not worry about fighting it too hard yourself. No, there will be judgment on their lives, fruit notwithstanding. Faithfulness is about love for God, not about how it plays into temporal levels of success. The well done, my good and faithful servant, is all about the well, not the done. In other words, it will not be about how much was done, but how well it was done. So let's Lutheranize that a little bit, right? <laughs> live for Jesus and live for Jesus alone. Let his spirit, that Holy Spirit, dominate you because the Lord is so powerful that he can even work through somebody like you. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts he has blessed us with and entrusted to us for his kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize. As St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Hi, Team Jesus. I'm Kathy Chelton, and I've got Jason Kraft and Andy Lahr with me today. We are the three music coordinators for our 1030 worship service here at St. Stephen. Hey, guys. Did you uh, either of you have any band experience before joining the praise team? I did not really. I played in a garage band for a couple years, but that was about it. Same for me. I've played piano for a lot of years, but my experience is really with ensembles and choir and things like that. Well, how did you get into uh, playing with the praise team then? Well, that's kind of a funny story. I was in a small group and Kathy joined us and uh, she liked my deep voice and she was like, hey, can you sing? And my wife was like, no, he cannot, but he does play the drums. 
I remember that well. Jason, do you remember the first drum kit that we used here? Yeah, that was uh, the, the little uh, tabletop thing. That was uh, unique. <laughs> we sure have come a long way since then. Yes, we have. So here's our plea. We would really like to find some musicians, especially to play keyboard or uh, guitar with us in our contemporary services. And as you've seen, the praise team experience is, uh, is great, but it's definitely not required. And we're not asking people to play every week. We can be flexible with schedules. You can just, you know, pick the times you're able to. So that would help out. So surely there are some musicians hiding out there. God has dropped several people in our path along the way, and I think he just might do it again. So don't be shy. Feel free to reach out to any one of us. We'd love to talk to you. You can uh, stop any one of us after church on Sundays or feel free to reach out to the office to get in touch. We can't wait to hear from you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. For this week's highlights from the Team Jesus News, we have a couple opportunities for fellowship coming up again. The Silver Saints will meet this Thursday, August 17th at 12 noon for a carnival of a good time. Everyone 55 and older, members and friends, are welcomed. Also, all women 19 and older are welcome to join us for this month's Gather Around the Tables event. We'll meet for fellowship, conversation, and fun on Friday, August 18th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. If you plan on joining, let us know by contacting the office. Also, Team Jesus, we need faith helpers. Are you looking for a way to be involved on Sunday mornings? Well, do we have an opportunity for you? In order for our Sunday youth classes to function, we need a teammate helper in each of our classrooms to adhere to best practices for youth ministry. We have signups created for each classroom that needs a teammate helper. As a helper, there is no teaching requirements. You are simply helping to serve our youth. All faithful Christ followers, from young adults to grandparents and everyone in between, can help. Don't miss out on this opportunity to share your faith and model servanthood to the next generation. Contact the office or sign up today through the link in the Team Jesus News. Grief Share is a support group ministry that helps people heal from the pain of grief. The Grief Share video seminars, workbook exercises, and small group discussions give participants encouragement, useful advice, and hope. The Grief Share videos are, are excellent. The video strengthened me. It's a freeing kind of thing to be able to talk about your loss. My workbook helped me to unravel the feelings I was going through. If you know people in your church or community who are grieving the death of a loved one, tell them about Grief Share. Or visit a Grief Share group yourself to heal from the pain of your grief. There was such a void until I got into Grief Share. I never really healed down deep until I came to Grief Share. Grief Share brought me out of my sadness. Begin your journey from mourning to joy at Grief Share. This morning in our prayers, we want to remember Larry and Carrie Lee that lost their dog, Buddy. 
prayers for Jack Lonzinger as his re continued recovery from a fall. Um, prayers for quick healing for him. Prayers for Preston. This is Madonna's grandson that's still recovering from that uh, accident. Um, he's got a long way ahead of him, but he's able to put a little pressure on one leg. So that's a good sign. Prayers for John and his uh, salivary cancer. He's going to have indefinite treatments. This is a friend of uh, Mike and Carrie Snyder's. Also another friend, Mackenzie battling colon cancer and Laura with multiple myeloma battle going on. And she's also facing some dental issues related to that. And one final friend, Julie, battling breast cancer, but has a good prognosis. Prayer of Thanksgiving for Bill. This is Madonna's cousin that has been diagnosed as cancer-free. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, empower your church to be obedient to following the great commission of making disciples. Pour out your spirit upon us all so that we are better equipped to share the hope of Jesus that we have with others. Open doors to our top 10 list so that we have the opportunity to share our hope in Jesus. And we also ask your continued guidance in our ministry clarity process so that Team Jesus is united in our purpose of joyfully empowering others to be Christ's followers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, guide the leaders of this world and especially our nation. Grant peace and justice for all people so that your gospel may be heard in all nations. Watch over those who serve in our armed forces, our law enforcement, and all first responders. Send your angels to guard and care for them and bring them home safely to their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of strength, heal those who are ill, especially Larry and Carrie, Jack, Preston, John, Mackenzie, Laura, Julie, and Bill. If it be your will, give them healing, restoration, and strength, and comfort those who are mourning the death of loved ones. Death is certainly a reminder to us all to be ready for our final call. Keep us always steadfast in our faith until our final call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you call us to be your own through the power of baptism. Help us daily to remember that you have made us your children in baptism. So we celebrate with Eric, Evan, Madeline, Courtney, Carlin, Nash, Chelsea, Mason, Addie, and Carter as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays. Let us all delight in your baptismal promises of forgiveness, hope, new life, and everlasting life with you. So lead us to hear your word, to trust in it, and to give witness to it in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, loving Father who loves to shower gifts upon his children, we give you thanks and praise for the precious gift of marriage. So we rejoice with Matt and Meg, Shane and Heather, and Al and Brenda as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and strengthen them and all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you would be with our association schools, Martin Luther Academy, and also Lutheran High School of Kansas City as they begin their new school year. We ask that you would watch over all of the teachers as they teach the administrators as they administer things. Watch over all the kids as they learn and grow, especially in their walk with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And be with all those families that they may be blessed through those schools and be drawn closer to you and your love for them in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen.
Destiny. 